Hey guys, welcome to Red 5 -0. Thank you for tuning in to another video. If you're new to the channel, thank you for stopping by. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. So, in today's video, we've got 2021 Mustang Mach-E rear-wheel drive version. This Mustang Mach-E has got the extended range version of the battery with the rear wheel drive, so it means it's got 290 horsepower, 370 foot-pound of torque, and with your 0 to 60 in 6.1 seconds, all that while getting you 300 miles range on fully charged. All right, so let's start with the front of the Mustang Mach-E. Um, it does have the similar resemblance to the Mustangs. I do like how they've kind of combined the uh, pre-refresh and the post-refresh models with the Mustang. Very aggressive looking front fascia. The LED, it's going to be standard LED headlights with LED strips. You've got your Mustang logo right here. It looks slightly different than what it used to on a typical Mustang. This is the premium model. This got the piano black finish, whereas the base one would have some hard plastic, um, grayed out plastic. That doesn't look all that good, but the premium looks amazing. And here we've got active grill shutters as well that will automatically open and close as needed for the airflow purposes. And you've got a bunch of sensors here, as you can see. For the Ford Copilot technology, which we'll discuss later in the video. This is the front on the Mustang Mach E. As you can see, there's obviously no engine, it's all electric, and it's got a surprising amount of storage space here. I do like how they got the Mustang logo right here. Overall, I think the front looks very good. It does remind me of the typical Mustangs, and it's good that they didn't just use the Mustang name, they were also able to kind of have some muscle to the Mustang because I know a lot of people weren't huge fans of. Mustang Mach-E when it first came out using Mustang's iconic brand image. All right, so moving on to the side, we've got 19 inch wheels on it, which in my opinion really suits this car. Um, they are pretty aggressive. The base model has the 18 inch. Um, since this is a premium model, we've got the cladding that is body painted or it's blacked out, whereas on the base trims, it would be gray plastic. And here we've got the charging port, obviously. The wheels are wrapped up in 225 tires. This is like if we said it's the extended range, exemplified by the X here. I kind of do like the side profile on Mustang Mach-E. It's got the sloping roof line where that would have the typical that you would find on the Mustangs, uh, although it's blacked out on the top. From the side standpoint, it looks like it has a very sloping roof line. But here, you can see there's a black blacked out paint. So when you look at it from a distance, it looks like it's typical fastback design. But here you can tell it's got traditional roof line, which means the head space for the rear passenger is not sacrificed. You of course get the power folding mirrors here. Now this is what's the interesting part of how to unlock the car. Um, they've got pretty much no door handles on the back. Door handle here is pretty sleek. Like if I move back, you can't really see the door handle. To unlock the car, you gotta press this. And this pulls out a little bit and then you gotta pull on it. All right, moving on to the rear things of the Mustang Mach-E, you've got the tri-bar taillights to kind of really tell you about that's the Mustang. Um, it, they, they are sequential. You've got the Pony logo, you've got the backup camera, and of course your rear parking sensors. I do like how the reverse light also looks like the Mustang GT's reverse light. All right, so now we've got the trunk of the Mustang Mach-E. It offers a lot of storage and it's got tons of cargo rooms. So if you're taking it for like a weekend trip or something, you can easily fit all your stuff here. We've got your outlet here and some cargo netting over there. Uh, this is where you would plug it to charge it. This is your light indicator. It's got like a blue Mustang logo that illuminates when it's charging, which is pretty cool. So I feel like overall it's got really good trunk space for your weekend needs. Overall, I think Ford did a really good job with the designing of this car. If they're going to be competing with Tesla, I feel like Mustang is the brand image that they want to pursue and really put it out there. Okay, so now I want to show you the interior of the Mustang. As we said, to open the door, you're going to press on this. It does have a keypad as well. And you're going to pull here. You are greeted by the door sill that says Mustang, as you would find on your typical Mustangs. Since this is a premium model, it's got leather seats with nice stitching all around. Um, of course, they're all automatically powered right here. All right, so let's talk about the interior of the 2021 Mustang Mach-E. You want to start off here, you've got all four power windows up and down. You've got your mirror settings here, 
And since this is a premium model, you do have memory seating option here as well. Overall, I want to say the materials used on the interior is pretty good. This is somewhat of soft padding. This is definitely soft padding and you've got leather here, nicely stitched as well. This is a very interesting concept. This does have equipped with the Bang & Olufsen speaker system. This is a premium model. I really like how they've done the speaker grills up here. Down below is just standard hard plastic. You've got some storage here as well. And of course, you've got your headlight controls here. They're all auto and you can adjust the brightness for your display. And this is for your traction control. All right, so this is the steering wheel in the Mustang Mach-E. As you can see, it's nicely leather wrapped. I do like the feeling of it. Um, you've got your new Mustang logo with the horizontal lines going across. You got some piano black finish. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, it might get a little dirty, but overall, the steering wheel has a very nice grip and feels very nice to the touch. And of course, the highlight of this interior is going to have to be this 15 inch display that's vertical as opposed to horizontal ones found in Tesla's. But we'll touch on this display a little later while. I want to say the legroom and headroom is pretty good on this one. So we've got wireless charging here. You've got two USB port, one USB C, which is a very nice addition. Uh, you've got two cup holders, of course. I like how Ford has been going with this knob for the shifter. And we've got a center console storage here as well. It slides out and you've got some USB port and your normal outlet as well. I do like how they got a parking brake as just a flip of a toggle. And here we've got the 10 inch LCD display that is fully customizable that provides you some of the basic information. But of course, the main stuff still happens on this 15 inch vertical display. I think Ford did an amazing job with the interior overall. It's still sort of minimalistic but it still has some character, unlike the Tesla's interior, personally. Up here, we've got the LED map lights, LED dome lights. It's got a nice white tone to it, uh, some glossy finish around it. And uh, another highlight of this interior has to be this glass roof. It looks exactly like the Tesla's glass roof. It looks absolutely amazing and provides it for your interior to be much more spacious, much more brighter than it normally would be with a traditional roof. And talking about the interior, we touched on this a little bit in terms of the interior panels. I think overall the interior looks really good. Uh, the Bang & Olufsen system is present on this car since this is a premium model. The Another good thing about the Bang & Olufsen system is not just the interesting aspect of how the grills are done, but check out this dash portion of it where the dash has the speakers integrated into it. At first I wasn't sure what it was. Uh, until I really looked at the label, I'm like, oh, that's really interesting. They've got the speakers built into the dash, which looks amazing. And of course, you see all of these lights flashing at me. Those are your sensors for your uh, autonomous driving, basically, that I don't think it's out of mach -E just yet, but it will be soon. All right, so now let's talk about the highlight of the interior, which is this 15-inch vertical display. Here basically is the way to kind of set up your profile. The dealership has their own profile set up, so I'm not going to go and play around with it and set up my own profile. But this is your home screen. You've got the navigation up there. Some of the important stuff here as well on your main screen, which has got like radio station if your phone is connected and all that good stuff. This is the premium model, so it is equipped with the heated seats, which can be controlled with this toggle switch or not the toggle switch, but the touchscreen. And it also has a heated steering wheel that you can also control from there. And of course, your fan speed is also going to be touchscreen. I kind of wish they had some physical controls, but I think that's where all the cars are headed with all the touchscreens. I don't think we're going to revert back to physical controls, unfortunately. Uh, on this side, of course, you got some of your AC control as well. And this also has the passenger heated seats as well. So it's the same control as on the driver's side. One interesting part of this is actually the volume knob. It's actually integrated into the screen. And you still have the power button right there. And it has like this haptic feedback kind of that it does. It's really cool in my opinion. This allows you basically a customizable screen that you can put stuff that you use more often. So if you've got shortcuts for those. And now let's dive into the Sync 4 system of the Mustang Mach-E where you kind of got to learn all these different modes that this Mustang has. So first off, we've got the drive modes. The Mustang Mach-E comes with three different drive modes. You've got Whisper, Engage, and Unbridle, which is actually like the sport mode for like a normal gas engine car. When you do select these modes, your display also changes accordingly once the car is in drive. Here we've got the 360 camera on this car. We've got some front cameras. All of that good stuff is all standard on Mustang Mach-E if you're going for the premium model. You've got all your sensors, different types of camera views. You've pretty much got all the safety features baked into the Mustang Mach-E. 
And here we've got the Park A that you can toggle on and off. If you did not know, the Mustang Monkey -E does come with the Active Assist parking. And down below, we've got some access settings in terms of what it's going to do when it's charging. Uh, some of the basic stuff here, we've got driver assistance on the side as well. I kind of wish they had included the Ford Copilot stuff in there, but this is just very basic stuff. It is in the settings, which we'll cover just in a little while. And of course, we've got the valet mode. If you've got the GT version or something, you don't want people to be messing around. You can kind of lock certain features of it. But let's jump into the settings now. Uh, start off with the phone. Don't really need to worry about it. If you want to hook up your phone, all the phones are going to appear on this list. Uh, next up, we have got the the charge tab, which displays your current battery percentage, your history, and all that good stuff. Um, you can also set personal profiles if you wanted to, They're kind of like Ford My Key. And last up, we've got the driver assistance, which is the Ford Copilot technology. It's got so many safety features, as you can see from here. It's got the lane keeping assistant, pre-collision assist, rear view camera display, blind spot monitoring assist. I mean, this has got so much stuff. And the good thing is that it's all standard as long as you get the premium version of the Mustang Mach-E. All right, so now let's talk about the rear seats of the Mustang Mach-E. In terms of material use, it's pretty consistent with what's being used in the front. You've still got your soft padding, you've got leather uh, where your hand would go, and of course, we've got the interesting Bang & Olufsen speaker grills up here as well. Nothing has been compromised, I feel like. The leather seats are really good. Uh, they're stitched as well, so they're using similar type of materials as they used in the front. And I think the overall room for the rear passenger is pretty adequate. What I actually did, I actually tried sitting behind myself on one of the passenger seats, as you can see here. And you can see I've got tons of leg room here. Uh, of course, we've got a map pocket here as well. And you've got your charging port and your AC vents here as well, too, if you want to use that. And here's a view of the glass roof from the back. I think it just looks absolutely amazing how it looks for the rear passengers as well. Overall, I think Ford did an amazing job with the Mustang Mach-E's exterior and the interior. It still retains some of the Mustang's heritage while still looking ahead in the future in terms of electrification. I think it's a proper competition to the Tesla Model Y and using the Mustang name was probably the right choice. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below what do you think about the Mustang Mach-E and of course subscribe to Red 5.0 for more Mustang content. Yeah, I can give it to her. Go up.